Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Man Child Support with Joe and Joe. I am Jordan, and this is Joseph. We're going to be talking to you about a whole lot of things today over the course of around 20 to 30 minutes. Uh, Joe, I have a quick question for you. I have a long answer. Okay, were you ever beat as a child? Uh... What about you? What about you? Was I beat as a child? Yeah. Um, no, I was not really beat. I would say it was more of the, the Hispanic beating where it's like, okay, like I fucked up or I did something wrong. Um, so I got like, you know, put over the leg, you know, and then get, give a good slap, but yeah. nothing like, uh, nothing too severe where I'd like leave a, leave a mark or anything like that. You know, some emotional damage from uh, my glorious father, but nothing, nothing that, that horrendous. I mean, I think like, everyone got emotional damage. It is. Parents yeah. aren't perfect people, man. Parents aren't Yeah, perfect but people. like... Because everyone got that emotional damage, then isn't it on us to be, like, strong enough people to just get over it? It's true. Or is that my toxic no. masculinity I think talking? it might... I don't think it's toxic masculinity, necessarily. Well, actually, no, it might be, because it's the whole, like, man up. Yeah. Grow up hair. Don't be a pussy. But, no, I think it's more of, like... It's it's never a wrong idea to ask for help. Like, I've been in therapy for fucking, like, almost four years. Four years in around January. And it's helped me a lot in my life. Uh, to be perfectly honest with you. Yeah. So, like, there's there's a whole lot of people who are like, I don't need it, you know, I deal with it, I compartmentalize, I do all this shit to make it a little bit better, but I think that just having an outside person where you could just, like, literally just word vomit onto them and they're like, dude, it's okay, you're fine, but here are some things that you might be dealing with, yeah. then it's a little bit better. That's our. That's my dog. So. Yeah, it's like Jade, she needs that word vomit right now. She needs she some help. She's she whining. Yeah. yeah, she wants to be a part of it. Yeah, I feel like that kind of word vomit, though, is happening right now. Yeah. And uh, the reason why this is a podcast and not just us shooting the shit is because, yeah. like, we're de- uh, dejected young men. Yes. Like, this day and age. So, yeah. like, imagine how many other people might relate to this shit. Exactly. That's why, well, you came up with a brilliant name called Manchild Support. Yes, I did. Now, do you want to go a little bit into that while I sneakily grab my, uh, my sketchbook? All right, so uh, I'm going to try to talk and draw at the same time. You don't have to. Yeah, go for it. uh, Basically, what my man-child support came from is uh, when I have free time at my house, I, you know, draw, uh, work on my art, and but I have some videos going on in the background, and a lot of times they're talking about, like, uh, current social issues. Okay. And a lot of those current social issues are, like, you know, MGTOW, Red Pill, this, that. Now, I'm not yeah. completely subscribed to these things. Mm-hmm. They're just interesting talking points. I'm like, okay, he has a point there. Yeah. And then I listen to opposing things, like, on the other side of the argument. It's like, okay, he has some good points, too. Mm-hmm. And uh, so when I listen to all that stuff, I'm like, well, I, I fall into a lot of these categories. Okay. Um, I'm a guy who graduated a college yeah. with, like, far from, like, a really marketable degree. And I got a lot of debt. Mm-hmm. And I'm working a couple of, like... Uh, jobs I didn't need college for and uh, I spend a lot of my time just doing nothing Mm. and uh, I'm you know not not too happy about all of it so uh, I should I should start you know looking at Jordan Peterson every every fucking day I feel that yeah and then uh, so then one day I had a conversation with you yeah and we we had a lot to relate about and it reminded me as like, oh, we're pretty much like man children. No, yeah. Well, so yeah, that's kind of where it came man from. Child support. No, I, I totally, I totally feel that. Like, I, I remember one of the first videos that I ever made. I'm sorry for the dog, by the way. Uh, one of the first videos I ever made was actually about is college worth it. I think it was a topic given to me. About, I like, saw that on YouTube. YouTube. Yeah, yeah. And the kind of conclusion that I came up with was. Um, You know, if you feel like you have a good life direction, a good life path, and you kind of have your shit handled, but you don't have it all the way, like, you're still figuring out. Like, you go into college at 18 normally, some people a little bit older, but still, you go in fairly young, and you're fresh out of high school, which doesn't really give you a whole lot of, like, freedom to do a whole lot of stuff. Like, you get, like, basically the gen eds. Like, you learn about, like, physics, But you still gotta take them when you get to school anyway. Yeah, exactly. It's kind of dumb. Yeah. But... Yeah, you don't really get, like, I remember, like, it wasn't until my, like, junior-ish year where I was fully kind of getting into the swing of, like, okay, I kind of want to do this with my life and then immediately change it to fucking painting. And by the way, I changed back to VCD. Officially? Yeah, officially changed back to VCD. I want to get out of college. uh, (laughs) For those of you listening who uh, are not in art school at, at, at all. Yeah. VCD is just what we say for graphic design. Yeah, visual communication design. That's what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Also, um... I've just been reminded that a lot of people tell me I talk I talk way too fast. 
No. Do you want to slow it down? Let's try. Do slow you need a Xanax? <laughs> I don't take drugs, but you can have a Xanax. I was actually going to talk about drugs for a little bit, but let's let's continue with the college thing. Okay. Um. So yeah, the conclusion I came up with: if you feel like you don't really have a whole lot of direction, you don't necessarily know what you want to do. College is a great place for you. Like if you are undecided, it's a great place to meet people. It's a great place to take, you know, awesome classes that really expand your understanding. Like there's a few classes I took, never thought I would take that have changed my life. Um, so I would say that it's it's kind of like in the vein of that. But, you know, I have a good friend who, like, kills it in art. And he was like, yeah, I actually got into where we where we go or you went, you heart. And I was like, well, I don't really think you need that. He actually said it. Yeah, he was like, um, he was like, yeah, I, I'm probably going to succeed anywhere. I don't necessarily need this. And, you know, college is a big thing. It's a whole lot of debt. Um, it's a whole lot of time. It's a whole lot of stress. And it's not necessarily the best option for everyone. And I feel like, like we talked about this very briefly when we were like deciding to start this um, podcast where it was like, I'm doing it basically for my parents because they're like, you're getting a degree. You need to have a degree in this world. But in reality, there's like millions of people, like a lot, actually a lot more than millions who don't have a degree and still very, or are still very successful, you know, or find their success in different ways. So, you know, I'm kind of struggling right now with the the fact of the matter is like, okay, so I swapped to VCD. So instead of two and a half years, I have one and a half years left if everything goes according to plan. And I pop out and then I get into some sort of design firm, design job. And I don't necessarily know if I'm going to be happy with that because me knowing myself, I'm not like satisfied with like a traditional nine to five as most people will. Like I have trouble getting up like past A couple 12. things about that. Yeah, what's up? Um, I got some buddies that work at uh, Graphic Design Studios. Yeah. Right? And uh, it's like a factory yeah you're, you're not really it's not it's not brutal physical labor like you're not lifting shit all day. yeah yeah uh i mean maybe some studios i don't know That's but like true. you clock in like mega early mm -hmm. right so you can beat traffic all that exactly and then uh you'll you you would just won't go home it seems like now, it you'll go home but you're, you're still working on stuff yeah right until at like, home yeah until staying like, super until late like five in the morning and then you gotta catch your 4 30 bus you're already like 30 minutes late for your freaking bus to get back to your like job. I know. The I grind mean, never stops. It never stops. Yeah, and then you you're you're designing things that aren't even yours. That's the I biggest don't think, part, I don't man. think you can handle that because no, like, look, like... Look, look at all this creative jizz you just smeared <laughs> it all over the wall. Like it's true. I got a white wall here, shit used to be brown. Yeah. I got like red paper over there, shit used to be white. Yeah. And, like <sighs> like all the stuff that I do. You, you need to have directors like I'm I mean you need to be directing people that work for you. No, you that's 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 designers. literally was that's like like what me and Ben are trying yeah. to do here, where we're trying to like start a company, we're trying to start Chucks, where it's like it's a multimedia company where we pull on designers and people like you and like a whole bunch of friends that we have. So and like just create the way I see it, like yeah. art school, um, a lot of people they don't know what they're gonna do with it. Yeah, they they know what would be nice mm -hmm. if if they did this and that with it. Yeah, but. Like, the way I see it, higher education is, like, training for a job that you already mentalize you're inside of, right? Exactly. So, say if you want to be, like, a tool maker, you got to be a tool maker's apprentice for four years. Mm -hmm. Four years, that's like going to college, Pretty right? much, yeah. So, if you wanted to be, like, a psychologist, then it's the same kind of deal. It's not like, oh, I'm going to go to a place where I uh, extend my high school and, like, get pseudo adult independence for like four years and then just like drink and have fun and study psychology here and there no it's like i'm training to be a psychologist yeah. i'm gonna work in a psychologist's office and you gotta like put yourself in that, in that you, you always gotta be like one step ahead of like wherever you are in mm -hmm. order to get to where you're going it's like uh someone said to me like if you're studying to be a doctor you gotta act like a doctor word right so then you don't really know how to act like a doctor until like you're done with all your shit and uh you, you know you're a fucking doctor now mm -hmm. i i don't know the first thing about doctors hell for for all i know everything i just said about doctors is entirely incorrect yeah and then you know what if if you're listening and then uh, i'm wrong well then i'll give it to you i admit it you're right and i'm wrong yeah <laughs> i don't know but you find like with art school or people who don't really have that much direction in art school at least which actually is a vast majority of our students i find um, they don't like, they don't, they don't end up usually where they want to be. Like I was at my uh, family Thanksgiving. It wasn't Thanksgiving. I, it might've been Thanksgiving. The whole family got together, my mom's side. And, um, I told them that I was like, yeah, no, I'm going to painting. And my uncle who actually runs a design firm, he was like, dude, sure about that. And then I think either my aunt or my mom, 
um so like yeah i have a friend who went to art school for a painter is a very good painter but right now she's working like reception or something like that so it always kind of seemed like it always seems to circle around where like again you're never using your degree um you're never really like doing the thing that you kind of want to do or you're doing it on the side you know what another problem is yeah you don't even know what you want to do. That's the biggest It's thing. like you're looking at a map with no X on it. Yeah. And then it's like, well, where the fuck do I go? Yeah. But like right now, for you, the X is just graduation, right? And Literally, that, it is just getting out and yeah. then figuring it out afterwards. Now, for me, I thought that everything would just come together after graduation. Yeah. But then I graduated and then it just felt like I was in a big empty room yeah. with nothing in it. Like that scene from uh, where Steve Carell becomes God. Oh, fucking... Um... I don't, we'll Evan find out after the break. Yeah, so we're gonna take a break right now yeah. um, for our sponsors. Yes. Yeah, because we you. have sponsors. Give you. us money. Give us money. We're not we requesting. Need, we're we need you. money. Yeah. Chucks is like, it's actually doing pretty all right. It's 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 doing right. Yeah, we're doing we're doing fantastic. So all you right. know, a little change here and there would be awesome. Patreon. Patreon. Oh, we should actually start a Patreon. You don't have one yet. No, I don't. Okay. That's a good idea though. Fucking garage. I've seen the Koreans. Yeah. yeah. Get the fuck out of my way, right? Not really. Cut the fucking can! Bye, appetit. Okay, welcome back from our commercial break. That was brought to you by Mushi Fushi. Fun guys with fun guy. <laughs> what is, what, no, what is, okay, you yeah, got Chucks, you got Mushi Fushi, uh, dude, you we got... Have, I have so much shit. Do you know how many Instagram profiles I have for the different fucking projects? I just created a new one for this okay, new project. Okay, you're like the last spread of butter that's <laughs> like left in the fridge too long. So like when you try to spread it, it just like destroys the yep, bread. Yeah, it destroys the bread completely. But like it, the little bit you do spread is like just piffle yeah that's you right now with all these with all these organizations i I appreciate i have to keep my shit mad organized or else i just explode like i don't know there's some people who just like have just random shit on their desktop and i can't really talk but most of it is screenshots but like random shit on this i'm like how do you how do you like do it man i can't you see my fucking uh, hard drive it's organized to the tits but yeah so what we were talking about was um we were talking about after graduation. So Joe graduated, and he has a pretty good perspective on like what it's like after graduation. It's part of the reason why we actually started this entire thing. Um, and then I'm still in it. I've been in it for quite a while at this point. So I could give like the inside scoop of a person who's been there for like almost five years at this point. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, fun fact: Jordan is actually older than I am. Yeah, I'm 23. He's 22. Okay. So. And your boy's still in college. All right. So, still kicking uh, it. Here's what I'm gonna say. Uh, First and foremost, this is my experience. Um, the last thing I want to do is speak for like an entire, you know, demographic. You might as well. I mean, if, if you relate, then that's wonderful. Yeah. And uh, I'm doing this in the off chance you can relate. And uh, <clears throat> so here we go. Uh, graduated, and I had a whole lot of steam. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, yeah, I'm gonna do a whole bunch of shit with art, and I did. Um, I got an internship at the Middletown Art Academy, teaching Work. kids how to like draw and paint. Um, I got this thing with uh, this local park organization, and I helped kids paint oil barrels. Okay. But th- with those things, I wasn't getting paid. Yeah. Uh, oh, and I got like this uh, decal design gig that I'm working on. A little graphic designing. Yeah, okay. and uh, then I got the uh, this comic I'm making for this nonprofit uh, purpose for like domestic abuse awareness cool and uh, yeah it sounds cool but uh part of not having classes Mm -hmm. and like having a job is it's a lot harder to structure your free time um not like practically like on paper yeah it's really easy the hard part comes with just grabbing your nuts and just going and doing it yeah and that's uh, what i struggle with a lot yeah that's what i struggle with now the reason why that's hitting me hard now is because in school, everything was laid out for me, right? You go yeah. to you go to this class at this time, and you do this assignment by here. Mm-hmm. And uh, now it's up to me to set those uh, things. Yeah. And I've never had this kind of uh, personal accountability of before. And uh, look, I, I'm not going to hide behind anything. I'm not going to make an excuse. Uh, although uh, there there's some like self improvement stuff you can do, like. Uh, uh, delaying gratification, like mm. uh, if you want like an orange, don't eat it. If you want chips, don't eat them. Like uh, use your non-dominant hand more often. Oh, that, oh, that, that was disgusting. What? It just splurge no, out? No, the texture of like the. Your pen. that's meant for fabric. I was gonna tell you that's meant for fabric. Motherfucker. Yeah, I was like, you're not. You're, so you're not using the right thing. 
So uh, what I did was mm-hmm. uh, get some par- get a couple part time jobs. Oh, that's much better. Nice. And uh, that's just so that while I look for a sustainable way to make money off art, I'm not completely in the hole because that. I'll have something coming in. And student loans are terrifying. Mm. And on top of all that. There's like this social pressure to like kind of get my life started because, you know, still living with my parents, I feel like a 14 year old. Mm -hmm. Right. Although I got more freedom, like I got a car and I got a job. I can like go get groceries. Mm -hmm. I can like go put gas in the car. Yeah. And uh, I don't know that that stuff feels nice. Uh, And then you're you're not really anything. You're like you're not a student. You're not this. You're not that. It's like you're an artist. Yeah. But like this weird limbo state. Yeah, you're just a person, mm. but like, sometimes you feel like some sort of cog in like the machine that like no one knows about, and then like you look at all your friends on like Instagram or something, and they're all like having a life, and yeah. then, but then like that's the thing, like they're all working too, yeah. but like if if you see it on social media, it's like kind of like it's probably a little bit fake. Yeah, because fake, like a little bit posed. Well, you're not gonna post things that make people miserable. I'm, I'm depressed and crying in the shower, and then just caption like. LOL. I mean, you post those things. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I try to. So, I try to make it a little bit. You lighter, got any but... more questions? Yeah. Well, let me give my perspective at least. So I've been in college for. Um, it's coming up on five years next year. So I've been in college for four full years. Um, you know, I had some medical issues and everything like that. That I had to like, not really drop out, but leave for a little bit. You know, I got hospitalized a few times and everything, but. Um, I've been, I've been in the game and eventually I just kind of get sick of it. Like in my experience right now, I'm realizing that like I'm developing more as an artist. I'm developing my own style. I'm creating more stuff like within the stuff that I actually want to do. And I'm finding like classes and everything less and less and less appealing. Um, we're like, you know, it's not like I know how to graphic design well and that I can't like learn anything from the teachers or like art history isn't interesting or like all these AUCs or like just like Janet's, um, you know, aren't that interesting. But I feel like I'm slowly wasting my time and money at this point in time. Like if I would have graduated last year, I would have probably been fine. But on a side note, I did take a semester off and it was a good decision for my health, um, but also a very bad decision for my health. So um, how's it bad for your health? It was bad for my health because I I just got out of the hospital in January and then I um, had to go to group therapy for a pretty long time, for a few months. So I couldn't necessarily fit school into my schedule and I talked to my parents about it and they're like, it's fine if you want to take the semester off. But it kind of got to the point where I was like, oh, God, I'm spending every day just inside. I was down here, which isn't like the best environment to just like wake up and exist in. It looks but, like you're about to get attacked by an asbestos monster. No, it very second. much does. It yeah. very much, it's coming together slowly, but oh my God, it's very janky. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so living down here for a little bit, you know, I would wake up at like three o'clock in the afternoon and not have anything to do. And I realized how important school was to the, to, to that fact because it gives you structure. You know, I have to complete these assignments by this time. I have to be in class. I have to go see people. I have to communicate with the teachers. You have to flex your brain muscles a whole lot more compared to trying to be self-motivated. And me, I'm notoriously not self-motivated when it comes to stuff. Like, I need people like you and Ben and everybody else to, to kick my ass to, like, yeah. yo, you, you need to get on this shit. Jordan, you need to edit the videos. Jordan, you need to finish your assignments. You need to do all this shit. You know, that's uh, one thing. Like, ever since I, like, came down here, I saw you and Ben slinging dick putting all this together. I'm like, yeah. Jordan's a fucking beast right now like yeah. like having have you watched this... do you have you watched full metal alchemist i i saw the part where the 14 year old kid becomes a giant metal monster that and then i that was stopped it. watching i don't know okay. what happened in full metal alchemist <coughs> there's, a, there's this homunculus named sloth and basically he is a super strong homunculus but he moves really actually no he's a super strong homunculus he moves very slowly but in spurts he is like sonic where he can like sprint and there's this entire scene about it so, yeah, that's kind of like me, where I can do a lot of work and produce good shit and clean my entire basement over the course of an afternoon and make everything look nice and fucking pure, pretty and beautiful and everything like that. But then there's, like, 98% of the other time where I'm just not doing fucking anything. I'm just sitting on my ass. See, uh, my analogy is because I... I'm sorry, I'm not ever close to the mic. I should be closer. It's okay. Uh, but <clears throat> my analogy, because I'm a huge fucking Dragon Ball Z uh, yes. fanatic. Oh, believe me, uh, no. When... Piccolo throws baby Gohan <laughs> at the mountain. I remember telling me about this. Yeah, yeah. and uh, he's all freaking out at, all of a sudden, but then he like becomes a fucking Hiroshima bomb and yep. clears out the freaking mountain. <laughs> yeah, you said like yeah, yeah, you need to be in a constant state of Piccolo throwing you at the mountain. Exactly. Basically, exactly. yeah. So uh, 
And you know what? What else? What would really help you? I I got this book uh, about the production of uh, Studio Ghibli. You know Studio Ghibli, yeah. right? Um, it was written by uh, someone who works really closely to Hayao Miyazaki, Word. and like he was a uh, he did this this way, and like there was this other guy who did this this way, and the book is called Mixing Work with Pleasure, mm. and uh, I would give you the book, but I'm honestly don't I'm not sure like if you'll read the whole I'm thing. Not gonna read it. No, he's I'll, not. Gonna I'll look read up it. on Wikipedia the, the the plot summary. Just yeah. spook through that. You're gonna spark note it. It's high school style. High school style. I mean, what that's the fuck how I got through we high school. About? That's how I got through high school. We were talking about um oh, the before you're... and after of college experience. Yeah, so yeah. you're you're during the college experience. Yeah, that's me. You want to hear about mine? Yeah, totally. What you got? Okay, so I'm you are a killer student, by the way. Yeah. So as Jordan get, get nice and close. As Jordan said, um, I was a complete baller. Yeah. Uh, I like went above and beyond every assignment. Like yeah. I showed up to the school. I was a commuter. I lived thirty minutes away. I showed up at like eight. And then I wouldn't leave until like, um, like two in the morning. Yeah, I and I know I got some like people out there that was like, "Oh, I showed up at six and I didn't leave until like six the next day, and I worked five full time jobs." Uh-huh. And like, yeah. I I understand. You you went harder than me, and I respect it, and I recognize it. That said, it was hard for me. Okay, so uh, and uh. You know, I was I tried to be like really creative. I was like friendly. Mm-hmm. I was like in the sculpture club. I was helping out like a homeless shelter. Uh, I was making the senior video. Yeah, I'm I tried to get you that. to do it. Yeah, I should have called. Th- I should have called that guy over there. Yeah, Ben. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, so, and uh, oh, Hartford Maple Syrup Club. I was doing that. Um, all my teachers loved me, mm-hmm. and uh, it was just every day. Like I was like, oh yeah, going to school. Yeah. Right. But then. Like, then it all went away. Uh, but I got to talk to people my own age, and I got to do what I really liked, and there was structure, and uh, still nothing but good memories. I'm glad. Yeah, yeah. I'm really glad. And so, if, okay, so let's propose a way to fix the system then. So what do you think is a good in-between? Because right now I feel like you feel like you're lacking structure. Yeah. You're lacking artistic motivation and everything well, like that. Well, uh... I think instead of trying to fix the structure like on a big scale, yeah. what you got to do is... Is this pen good? Yes, yeah. it's a good pen. What you got to do is figure out how to fix your own structure. Okay. And uh, just right now, I'm like, I got to come back. Yeah. Like, I, I could come every Sunday if I can, if, if this guy can get this equipment here. Yeah, no. On, on the regular. This is a great uh, shit to do. Yeah, because I can help keep you accountable, <laughs> right? Because yeah. well, what else would you be doing on a Sunday night? Fuck all, right? Yeah, yeah. Fuck, fuck all, <laughs> yeah. right? Uh, same here. I'd probably be saying to myself, "Okay, I'm gonna draw," and then I just watch YouTube. Yeah, all night. just watch YouTube. Right. Yep. So, uh, but this this way we can like chronicle the week. Exactly. Yeah, and uh, you can be like, "Hey, Joe, did you get this thing done?" I was like, "Oh yeah, actually, I did." And I feel like this communication between us it's like good psychological. Yeah. Because uh, you know, it's like you're my friend, I'm your friend, and then we're, we're not like depressed in our own little holes. Yeah. And uh, I'm just working like on stuff because you got th- this podcast, you got your clothing line. Mm-hmm. So I think like uh, helping each other spark each other's initiative and be accountable for each other. Yeah. yeah. So like if I tell you I'm gonna do something, then like I'm gonna have to report to you I need to and update. the audience. Yeah. Like it's like J- Joe didn't do this thing. He's an asshole. Exactly. And like, I mean, people are gonna call us assholes no matter what. Yeah. It's it's the public. Exactly. Yeah. Well, so, uh, at first, probably just our friends and some family members may see this, but in the future, hopefully, we'll have a larger audience. Yeah, but you yeah. can't count on it, though. No, 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 no. Yeah. We got to do this for fun, and that's the important part. I mean, I'm having get, fun. Uh, you're not having fun? No, I said I am having oh, fun. Yeah. Having fun. Oh. Cool. We, can, we can stop. I can leave my own house. <laughs> <laughs> I just stay. Yeah. He's like, all right, get some sleeping here. I'll hang out with Jade. We got the five minute mark, by the way. We got the five minute mark? Yeah. All right, cool. So uh, we don't have to cut it short like last time. No. You know, uh, we're not Jews here. We don't have to circumcise. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going okay. There. I'm going there. <laughs> Fuck. Read the fucking Bible. <laughs> Read the fucking. <laughs> hey, listen, listen. I- I'm gonna take care of him real quick right now. <laughs> All right. We we could edit this if we are. Are we gonna edit it or no? Um, probably not that much. I want to keep right. it in. It's gonna be a slate. <laughs> All right. Exorcismo de Amnes Mundo Espiritu Satanica Potestas El Mundo de Vanasai Ecrea Madio Pio Adio Justo Adio Shito Crutiago Sin Crusham Seate Sin Crusham. I heard Satan in there. <laughs> no, you're hearing what you want to hear. No, 
Okay. Right. <laughs> well, yeah. So yeah, so I actually have a topic for us for our next portion of this this Jimmy Jam. Um, both minutes of it. Both minutes of it. So we're gonna get into that. And now a quick word from our sponsors. Less quick. I used to love that chocolate shit. And welcome back. The, the sponsor today was what Nestle. I think I think it was Nestle. No, Nestle is a terrible, terrible company. It was Nesquik. The, Nesquik. The, the chocolate milk of our childhoods and our dreams. It was delicious. Yeah. Have you ever used Hershey's chocolate syrup? Or is that a little bit too rich for you? Um, a couple times. A it, it wasn't that frequent in my house. Yeah. We were a Nesquik family. Uh, I was a Nesquik too. I love strawberry. And then I had this weird obsession with the fact. Do you know? You know the whole movie It? That whole series. Oh, with the clown. Yeah, with the clown. No, but I remember walking through the Blockbuster, and when I was a little, little kid, my brother got the It uh, video case, and he pointed to the clown, and he said, Hey, Joe, you see this guy right here? He's real. Yeah. He's coming after you. And how old were you? Uh, I was like five or six or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, that hits. I was in elementary school, and for whatever reason, I think my friend told me about the book. I don't think I knew about the movie, but my friend told me about the book, and for whatever reason, I stayed off ketchup for a while because like, it's, it's blood. I'm eating its blood, and then all of a sudden, like cho- or strawberry milk, which was like the shit for me, it went away too. And it wasn't until like many years later that I got back into the swing of ketchup. That yeah. reminds me, yeah. uh, when I was like 12 or so, I had a really, really terrifying nightmare about an Oreo factory okay. run by like these puppets. Okay. And uh, the dream was like in black and white, and I couldn't eat Oreos for like a year. Damn. Were yeah. they like? hurting the Oreo? Like, what was going on there, man? Like, really bloody puppets moving in, like, jerky things, and, like, I think they were, yeah, like that, and they were turning, I don't know, people into Oreos? Damn. And and it was, like, a giant building, and... The secret truth behind Oreos. Yeah, and I I was lost, so I didn't know how to get out. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have nightmares? Like, not frequently, but, like... Well, I have dreams where, like, I'm in really big trouble, Mm. and then I wake up, and I think I'm still in that situation, like... So they're more, like, stress dreams compared to, like... Yeah. Die. Yeah. This dude. Yeah. Like uh, uh, let's see. I had a dream that oh, uh, this one was really bad. Yeah. Uh, this guy was like talking to me about like how deep shit I was in, mm. and I had to defuse a bomb in this rundown public bathroom, oh. and like there was only like this dingly green light. Yeah. And it was like flickering on and off, and like I woke up, and it it was like the guy from the dream was still there behind me, mm. and I'm like, oh shit. But then I woke up and was like, oh my god, this is a dream. Yeah. Yeah. No. I don't really have that many nightmares. That's why I ask. Cause it's like, they don't really happen to me anymore. I used to have a lot when I was a kid, but not really anymore. I usually have dreams about like getting a whole lot of money and then wishing, like, oh my god, I hope this is real. And I wake up and I'm like, fuck, all right. Well, back to being broke with $20 in my bank account. But yeah, that's kind of where I lie. Yeah. But anyway, we had a request from someone to talk about some stuff. So we're going to. What the hell are you yeah, talking we're gonna, about? We're going to go into that. Who, who knew about this and Shh, who requested don't worry it? About Okay, fine. Oh I'm just gonna go with it. Okay. I'm just gonna go with so it. So the question was, damn, what the hell's that banging sound? That is my brother sprinting across the the floor, oh. literally launching themselves at doors because they are wild animals. All right. Anyway, the question was, um, so Colorado, put well technically Denver, uh, passed a bill to legalize uh, psychedelic mushrooms because it's already weed's already legal there. And they made a bill, and it got voted, I think, 51 to, like, it was, like, 51.5 to 49, whatever the math is, 51 to 49, basically. Um, it's not fully legal yet. I think there still has to be, like, a whole lot of whole lot of stuff that has to go on for it to become legal and for, it, for you able to buy it. But the basis of it was, like, if police catch you with it, it's supposed to be, like, the lowest. You're not supposed to pay attention to it. Like, if someone's like, has, like, mushrooms on them, you're not supposed to pay attention to it. So the greater question that I wanted to ask you was, what is your opinion on, like, like there's weed and then there's like there's like cocaine and heroin and then there's like you know psychedelics. I feel like there's a little bit of like two kind of spectrums that people kind of normally go down. Maybe three, but like what is your opinion on? Let's go with like drugs in general. Okay. And then we'll go a little bit deeper into into psychedelia and other things like that. Okay, drugs to me is like nothing I really cared about that much in my life okay. because uh, I never hung around the crowd that was like, hey Joe, take this or hey Joe, drink this. Yeah. And so I just kind of am indifferent to it, mm-hmm. like, my whole life. Now, uh, that said, I like being sober. And, like, yeah. the idea of not being able to, like, trust what's in front of me is, mm. like, 
not something I'm comfortable with. Yeah, because a lot of times you don't know what you you don't know what you're getting. Yeah, exactly, and uh, I don't because I'm very I have an addictive personality. Oh, really? Like uh, some people that are like overweight, like I'm kind of overweight. Um, yeah, you, you're fine. All right, you, all right, you look good. All right, thank Snooze you. A little well, I was like when yeah. I was like uh, I don't know, thirteen was bad, mm, you're and uh, potato chips, Ooh. absolutely no control. Yeah, and like I'm not, and it, my mom too, like we'll both eat a whole bag. Mm. It's not good. So okay, solution: no more chips in the house. Okay, great. Makes sense. And uh, oh, and like spinach dip. Okay, uh, which that, is apparently healthy. It has spinach. No. Oh, what are you talking about? A spinach in it. You, okay, next time you get spinach dip, like look up Blue the ingredients. Is it like a whole bunch of ranch, or is it like I don't know, I don't know what's in it? Like, it's like saying, okay, Pieces spinach of is to spin spinach dip is to spinach how guinea pigs are to pigs. All right, yeah. All right, yeah. So, uh, what I was saying was, okay, so say if I have like chips and spinach dip, I'm eating them all right now. Mm-hmm. If I have a whole unit of fucking spinach dip, like I'll I'll be like, I'll have indigestion for a while. Yeah, it won't kill me. Uh-huh. All right, as long as I don't like do it every fucking hour of every day. Yeah. Now imagine I got something on my that's so pleasurable, mm. it could really, really hurt me and everyone around me. Fair enough. And then some people they, they can do it, and then like their life is fine. I'm yeah. not one of them. No, no, they can. Manage so it. I'm not gonna risk it. Word. Right. And uh, I'd rather keep living my life the way I've been living it, yeah. and not worry about risking being a drug addict. Mm-hmm. And. Uh, yeah, I mean, when it comes to, like, the lower-level stuff, uh, like marijuana. Uh, marijuana. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I've I've been in situations where, like, I could smoke it, and I tried it, like, mm-hmm. once. Uh, but the reason why I always shy away from it is because I always have to drive home. Word. And, like, yeah. the people are dangerous enough. I'm not going to, like... You're not going to risk. You're not going to drive high. Yeah. Right, right. And it's like, oh, you can tr- smoke. Okay, you can smoke and drive, but yeah. I'm, I'm no, not. No, you don't want to do that. No, no, uh, no. Yeah. Meanwhile, I've done it multiple times, but exactly, it's not. You can. It's, it's not the best. You shouldn't yeah. do it unless you like. No, you shouldn't do it. I don't condone it at all. Don't don't yeah. smoke and drive at all. <laughs> don't drink and drive to smoke and drive. But how are you with alcohol? That the 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 legal drug that is horrible for people. Pretty much the same exact way I am about weed. Do you because... feel like you get a little bit too attached to it if you kind of like went into it a little bit more? Or... Okay, well. The reason why I say I say same as weed is because I always need to drive home. Okay. So like, oh, the, that's why. Okay. The most I'll ever have is like one or two drinks, and then I'll leave it alone. Yeah. Uh, but in every case where I've done that, um, it didn't do anything except burn up my throat and put bitter taste in my mouth. Right? Yeah. And uh, so I'm like, I'm not gonna keep drinking this. I'd rather drink like lemonade or something. Mm-hmm. And it was like, oh, just get a fruity drink. Oh, okay. Well, I don't know. Maybe I didn't think of that. Uh, but anyway, uh. I mean, there's a couple drinks that I, I've enjoyed, like mm. hard cider and like white <sighs> Russians. Like, oh, wow, the hard cider. Yeah, that's it. Everyone's favorite. Or uh-huh. like a, a white Russian with sure. like some chocolate syrup in it. Uh-huh. Like, I'll have that, but it's not like it's something that I reach for if I if I need to like cool down or something. Yeah, because I've never had it that frequently, mm-hmm. and uh, I've known some people that used alcohol as a crutch, mm-hmm. and that's it's a lot. some bad news it really is yeah, yeah I'm becoming dependent on it so uh, my drinking it's like if if okay first of all never drink alone like that's my philosophy wow. so yeah so if you guys were drinking it's like hey joe you want like a white russian it's like yeah i'll have one and then wait for it to go away and then i can leave sure that's it mm. yeah but if i'm thirsty i'm reaching for like the the vitamin water zero that's my drink oh, what's your choice. favorite by the way vitamin water uh the pomegranate oh yeah the best yeah. the, the blueberry acai oh that's the, the xxx one. yeah that is the shit yeah uh, i bring one in my lunchbox every time i go to amazon yeah do you know that uh the the zero is actually not that good for you, you should get the regular one apparently shit yeah All but right. it doesn't matter you're young you're gonna you're gonna live forever so. i'm 20 years old exactly. my you're body's in its prime. prime you're not 20 you're 22 i'm, I'm a saying warrior you're saying warrior yeah oh yeah <laughs> you ever wonder no i'm not gonna i'm not gonna ask that anyway um, but yeah, my experience with drugs. So um, I started uh, I started smoking weed when I was 17. Um, didn't get high for the few, two, first few times. I think it took about five times for me to get high. And when it was, I was like, oh, God, this is the shit. Um, so smoking on and off. And then you always make the packs with yourself where you're like, okay, so I'm not going to buy. I'm only going to smoke if someone offers it. And then you buy. And then, okay, well, I'm not going to smoke at home. Okay, and then you end up smoking at home. And you just kind of go down the rabbit hole. Um, got to a point where it, it got really dark. Um, it was actually, instead of making me feel good and happy and kind of forget about shit, it was actually making me more depressed. And I was too addicted to it to actually, um, 
to actually stop myself. It took a very hard wall that I had to hit um, that I'm still dealing with today to for me to actually be like, all right, I have to call it quits. And even then, I think I was sober for about like a year and a half. Um, and then on Halloween, I think. This Halloween? Years, no, 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 no oh, two years okay. ago. Two years ago. Um, I started it back up again, and then a few months in, the symptoms kind of came back, and I kind of ignored them as I normally do, and then it, it got it, it got bad. Um, so then I eventually had to quit, went to group therapy, figured all my shit out, and then, you know, sober um, as of right now. Besides Did you do alcohol. sober October? No. I, mm. I'm drinking a little bit. Did you do sober October? Well, every month for me is sober. Yeah, so technically. Yeah. <laughs> the sober October champion over here. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But, but, yeah, so my experience with drugs have been, like, a little bit iffy. So as it pertains to uh, psychedelics, then, like, uh, we're talking, like, acid. Let's do uh, LSD or acid and, and psychedelic mushrooms or, yeah, mushrooms. What what do you think about, about that whole experience? I mean, I recognize that some people get a lot of fulfillment from those yeah, things. Yeah, you can go and, inward like, a lot. Yeah, yeah and uh, they want... I want to like go into my brain. I want to like experience new things. Yeah. So like, hey, I that's see wonderful. The walls melt and watch yeah. a simulation crash. Yeah, and uh, that that that's wonderful for them. Yeah. It's just I've never had an urge to like do that myself. Like I was never. I have an idea. Let's go have some acid. Let's go do some fucking acid. Yeah. yeah. Um. Now, I know that people do those things yeah. and like they're okay. They don't die. Mm-hmm. Um. As long as they're like under watch yeah so you, that was the first time i had a trip sitter if i could but but then the other part of that uh coin like, like i said before i have to know that like i won't want to keep doing it fair right so yeah. i don't know it because say say I, I take like a hit of acid right sure no what if i really like taking acid well then acid, i'm in trouble it's true but I'll tell you a few things, and this can apply or doesn't apply. But acid is not necessarily addictive, but people say that weed is the same thing, but it can become physically addictive, not, like, chemically ad- addictive. Same with acid. Like, I think my brother and a whole bunch of people uh, – knows, like, a whole bunch of people who do acid, like, every single weekend. And it actually can, like, fry your brain a little bit. Um, so acid naturally has a cool-down timer of about, they say, two weeks for tolerance – um, a month for something, and then three months for the full experience. So you need to take a while because your tolerance builds really quickly. Um, so it kind of, and same with psych, or, uh, psychedelic mushrooms. So in a way, it kind of is kind of built into the system where like you're not supposed to take it all the time. But then again, people abuse rules like every single day, so it is possible. Um, in my personal experience with acid, I'd say that like it has enlightened me a lot. It has brought me to some very dark places, but I've always brought myself back and always learned like the lesson from it, the silver lining and all that stuff. Like I've had a few bad trips, um, especially on mushrooms. Actually, mushrooms is not the drug for me, or at least not yet. But you know, I, I can't really handle it at this point in time. But acid is pretty okay. Um, but I feel like with acid, at least, there's always a way for you to bring yourself out of it. Or have someone else bring you out of it. You're not dying. If you don't, if you take the good stuff and make sure you test your substances, you won't overdose. You know, you can take as much acid as you want. You're going to go on a hell of a trip, but you're not going to, you're not going to fucking explode. You know, your heart's not going to stop, even though it might feel like it is. Um, So in a way, it is safe. I think it's a lot safer than some of the harder stuff like cocaine, like Molly, that can actually be very dangerous if taken in high amounts or not done correctly. Um, It definitely is a whole lot more potent than uh, stuff like that. Not that I've done them, but from what I've heard, um, I think that they, in the proper hands, can be used well and effectively. Like, they're going through the clinical testing for depression, for at least shrooms, and that was a whole Denver thing. Um, so I think it does have a place, but like you said, uh, it's not necessarily for everyone, you know? Like, yeah. there's a whole lot of people who are afraid, like, dude, I'm going to lose myself. I'm not going to be the same when I come back. And to an extent, I wasn't the same after each and every acid trip. Like, I always learn something, Um you know, something always happened or whatever, but still, you don't really come back fully the same. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah. A couple things. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, you know, I haven't really touched that world at all. Oh, no, totally. And, That's like, what I want to ask. Cause, yeah, I'm, I'm fine. Like, my, yeah. the problems that I have, it's just like, all right, Joe, just nut up, do the things you got to do. Mm-hmm. And then once I start doing them, everything's better. So, uh, and then, like, I'll go through really, like, tough shit, right? And I'm like, okay, drugs help people through tough shit. Yeah. And, uh, okay, but me, I've, I've gotten through it. So I've made it this far just fine. And I feel like if I just keep, you know, doing the right thing, then I can keep going, right? 
And uh, another thing, kind of like on the practical side of this. Sure. How much do all these drugs cost? No, that's a big thing. How much is it burned, taking out of your bank account? Burned a hole in my goddamn wallet when yeah. I was smoking weed, at least. You know, acid. Yeah, I'm trying to save money right now. Yeah, same here. Yeah. Yeah, you don't have to go into the logistics of like that, but yeah, no, it, it can it can cost a lot of money. It definitely is an expense, and some people like can't live without it. So it just makes life a whole lot easier. I mean, same with alcohol to an extent. You know, people who need to have a drink every night, um, you know, it costs money. Like you can buy your own alcohol, but if you go out to a bar, it's like seven hundred percent more. Yeah, it's fucking ridiculous. Like ten dollars for a fucking like uh, mojito or whatever the fuck, and it's it it really gets there, you know. So, especially us who are trying to save money and have to pay bills and all that shit. Yeah. It can be tough. So, yeah, we discussed the drugs. And uh, this reminds me in uh, those videos I watch. Like, I'm pretty sure you and the people listening to this are familiar with the Doomer, right? Doomer? Yeah. uh, We'll go ahead and, like, go ahead and explain it just in case. All right. Doomer is a uh, character from internet culture. Kind of like, I don't know, the Chad or the Incel, if you've, like, heard of that. Yeah. Uh, The the Doomer is someone who is uh, a dejected young person, although they could be older. They're typically around our age, and uh, a lot of sources will tell you it's like they they recognize how screwed the world is. We're all gonna die in like ten years. We're mm. gonna like nuke each other to Thus death. Doom. Yeah. Yeah, and then uh, they don't really do much. Mm-hmm. Uh, so then what they do is uh, just sit in the room like a lot. And uh, they're kind of recluses, mm-hmm. and they tend to be sad a hell of a lot of the time. Some hikikomori. Some oh, hikikomori oh yeah. Stuff, yeah. Actually, I had an idea of writing a paper uh, relating uh, shut American shut-ins to hikikomoris in Japan. Because yeah. in Japan, they have like this uh, sister program yep. where they, they like assign you a sister who tries to coax you out of your room. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think we could kind of use the same kind of thing here. Right. Yeah. See that? And then, I don't know, just just comparing them. Anyway, what I was saying was, and if you're still fuzzy about, like, what a Doomer means, then um, you just type it up on YouTube. Yeah. Plenty of material. Uh Uh, So, based off what I said, uh, do you think you're a Doomer? Um, I definitely don't think so. I think right. I think I'm a doomer to an extent, you know. I'm definitely not like a Hikakamori type where I just kind of like stay in my room all day, even though I might do that occasionally, um, or a little bit more than occasionally. Uh, I would say I do think that if things don't change, and I think this is the distinction: if things don't change, if we don't make a very strong pivot in the right direction, then we're it's all going to shit. Once you graduate, yeah. Because I don't know if I ever told you about this, but post grad depression mm. like a damn train. How fast does it hit you, by the way? Like I said, like a train. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Uh, actually, essentially... One minute. Yeah. Uh, essentially, to say it in a short way, like a month out of graduation, mm-hmm. and that that's pretty much how I hit it. And maybe we can continue this in the next segment. Yeah. Actually, I think we're going to we're gonna close it up. We're, we've been going for about 44 minutes. Nice. Yeah, so we're going to do a part two to this, Okay. if it's all good with everyone. On the next episode the next of episode. Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> <laughs> It's Osama Twin Llama from the DC camp. Yeah, you like to run your mouth, you the people's champ. All that shit gon' get your t-shirt dead. A tag on your toe, we call that. Nigga, that's the DC stand.